Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, in this video, I'm going to share with you a very powerful thought that just occurred to me when I was lying down. I was actually sleeping. It's 3.24 in the morning right now, okay? My wife is sleeping, kid is sleeping, world is sleeping. I got this thought and I just, I was like, man, I have to make a video on this. And, uh, and I'll tell you exactly why this video is important. Uh, primarily because what I realized is throughout our lives, we have been taught uh, right from the day we are born, study hard, you know, go to school, study hard, work hard uh, so that you'll get a good job, so that you'll get, a, you know, a good salary, so that you'll get success. But now um, what I've realized is that statement is right, but at the same time, that statement is also wrong. And uh, this might be one of those videos which... Uh, which can be a game changer for the way you think, all right? So watch this video and please do let me know what you think because, you know, I always read your comments, all right? Um, if you're new to the channel, name is Loy Macedo. I'm a personal branding strategist. I help people get well-paying jobs in Dubai, UAE, or uh, the Middle East countries, uh, which is, you know, people love because it's tax-free. And uh, also people book my uh, services for consultation, that is advice, for personal or professional matters where they want a different point of view. Details are put down below. Been doing that for 20 years now. Okay. Now, wait. Before I start, let me have a sip of my homemade espresso. Uh, oh. Espresso without sugar is... Bah. Okay, yeah. And now that I drank my espresso, let me sip my soda also. Carbonated soda water. <clears throat> now, you just saw me that I drank a sip of my espresso. Okay? Now, this espresso is... I'm giving an analogy so you understand. This espresso is very easy to make in the house and very cheap. Okay? If I take the cost per saving, only investment was the brivel... It's a brivel or brill or uh, the machine, the coffee grinder and the coffee making machine. I used to think that is very expensive, complicated. Oh, it's damn cheap. Uh, damn cheap in the sense it's a one-time investment. If you buy the original brivel, I'll, I'll put the name down in the comments. Okay. And for someone like me who drinks coffee every single day, I drink, I have to drink. I'm a coffee person. I drink at least three to four uh, espresso, double shots. Uh, you know, don't drink if your heart is weak. I've been doing that for, ah, uh, man, I've been doing that for ages, man. I used to always drink kadak chai. I don't know if you know that. Kadak chai is a spot of tea, overboiled Indian style with milk and sweet and, you know, very hyper sweet. But once I started moving into being a athlete, I didn't want to take tea with sugar because it shoots your sugar up and then you feel completely, the your body yearns for sugar and all that. So coffee kept my energy, alertness at a very stable level. Okay, so I because I drink coffee every single day, I uh, those days I used to go to the coffee shop. Or I used to stay near um, uh, Starbucks in Dubai. So Starbucks could go there. I could go to the cheap Malbari shop uh, or I could go to the slightly upbeat shop, okay, selling coffee. So there were many uh, coffee shops in Dubai. But once I came here to Thailand, it's not that you don't get coffee. There are many places, but where I stay, I stay in the forest. So I have to drive down. I have to drive down to go get my coffee. And uh, there is Starbucks, okay. 
but it's hyper expensive by Thai standards. At least it is hyper expensive. It's like you can buy a full meal for two people or you can buy one coffee. It's that expensive. Means Thai standards. We have to keep that in mind. Then there is Amazon, which is a local brand, which is not like Starbucks, but they serve Starbucks kind of coffees. Uh, so if Starbucks is like 200 bucks Thai baht per coffee, this one is like um, 75, half the price. Okay, so 7,500. And then you have local coffees. Local coffees means they have a standard formula franchisee where they'll give you for 50. So 200, 100, then 50. Okay, the price goes down. But obviously, this one is not like the premium blend. They'll make it in front of you. It's decent enough. And it's still coffee. Only thing is extra sweet and extra milk and extra... Uh, they make it more like candy, uh, like chocolate, uh, like uh, sweets. Okay. But you can ask them, I want black coffee, whatever. So 200 bucks, 100 bucks, 50 bucks. And then obviously, there is the ones which are the cheapest. Maybe it'll cost you... You can go to 7-Eleven convenience store for 10 bucks. 10. You can buy a sachet, Nescafe, and put hot water and buy it. So 200, 150, 10. Or you can do what I did. Buy a professional coffee machine and serve yourself a premium blend. You can buy the best coffee beans and yet it will... Even though it's expensive buying the whole coffee bean, one kg or half kg or whatever, um, to prepare, each one comes to, like, I told you, you know, that one comes 10 baht. This one may come to 3 baht. 3. Okay. Now, the coffee is the same. Uh, but if you're a coffee connoisseur, the blend is different. The blend is different. The flavor is different. Okay. And if you are someone like me who drinks coffee every day, you can feel, you can feel the coffee. You can feel, oh, it's not so nice. Uh, and there are different variations. Okay. And if you're a coffee expert, like some of these baristas, by just smelling or tasting, you know whether the coffee is good, not good, expensive, not expensive, from Africa, South America, Brazil, whatever. We don't want to get into that. Okay. Now, ah. Uh, the same coffee, the same coffee which I'm drinking, you can get at a five-star hotel where instead of 200 bucks, it might, like Starbucks, just coffee with water, just coffee with water might cost you more than Starbucks, which actual value should be 10 bucks. In a five-star, it'll be like the price of a Starbucks because it's a five-star hotel. And if in case you take one of those uh, five-star experiences, let's say a signature restaurant, it can even go up to 500 bucks, the signature coffee series. I uh, I want you to Google search, search on YouTube, Michelin star restaurants. Some of them actually prepare like, you know, simple, even an egg fry. Really, huh? egg fry in a Michelin star restaurant can be the price of eating one month's meal. And it's so small. You know, they just give a dollop small. Because the chef treats his food like an artistic creation. Uh, especially, search on YouTube, the Michelin chef who is in Las Vegas. I mean, he'll serve you. For example, I'm just going to think this is a plate. Uh, There's a round dish. He has to put dots of, let's say, fish uh, egg, for example, fish egg, which is tiny. You know, if there are 100 plates, each one he will put with this, he will do like this, he will, and it has to look same, this has to look same as that, as this has to look same as that. Every one of them has to look same. They have to be the same weight. He even takes a scale. Huh? You need to see that to believe it. It takes a ruler to measure how much of a banana, how big, how thick, he weighs it and he puts accordingly. He, he takes a leaf, we'll compare it, the same size, okay. So it goes to that level. And uh, the price for eating 
such a small, like you can put in your mouth, will cost you maybe your one month salary. Okay, so there are different levels. And obviously that is for connoisseurs. Okay, so now I gave you an explanation of coffee at different levels. One month salary, like a thousand bucks in a five star hotel. Then there is 500 bucks. Then there is 200 bucks Starbucks. Then there is 100 bucks Amazon, which is like a franchise. Then there is 50 bucks, which you can get from outside. Then there is 10 bucks you can get it from 7 Eleven convenience store. And this, which is a premium blend, but it's three bucks. Okay. Now the coffee is the same. Now the question that I want to ask you is, what type of coffee do you want? Seriously, what type of coffee do you want? Does it make a difference? Seriously, think about the question I'm asking. Does it make a difference having a coffee from a seven star and a five star hotel? And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I've been lucky. I've been one of those few lucky guys who have, who has tasted food which is like so overpriced. This five star hotels where you pay two three months salary of an average man just to taste one plate of whatever. Have we eaten that? Have been lucky or blessed or whatever to stay in a five-star hotel thanks to Agoda or Booking.com. Booking you get some good deals. I've stayed in a five-star hotel where I've stayed for a week, two weeks, business trip, where you eat the amazing food, man. The food is amazing, huh? five star. But after, you know, initially it's like, wow, the croissant, the chocolate, the buffet, the beef and the pork and the chicken and the mutton. But after two, three days of eating that, then it's complimentary because you paid for everything. Yeah, it becomes, ah. Okay, really, you get fed up, huh? And especially uh, what I want you to do is talk to people who travel constantly, who are constantly businessmen or who are high level executives who travel. Initially, it's fun. It's like, wow, I'm traveling the world. I'm eating five star hotels. But very soon you get, you know, in Hindi, they say kantal. You get not again. man. And it just becomes like a routine. You just want the coffee. You don't think of the five star meal and all that unless you're going out with a girl or a guy or. The, you know, you're going to enjoy. Others, you're just like, Ugh, just give me the food fresh. That's it. You yearn for simplicity. So, do you want five-star coffee? Or do you like Amazon? Because they give you that great experience. And Amazon really works hard to give you new flavor of the months. And uh, sometimes even I like it. But I've reached a stage in my life where Initially, when I started off, for me, it was like, wow, coffee cup and green leaf, Starbucks. Oh, I used to look at people drink coffee there. I just tell myself, one day I'll drink. And those days, I'm, I'm telling you, I came from a very poor background where I just knew there was coffee. I didn't know types of coffee. Then, you know, once after I joined Citibank, when my salary suddenly jumped to $1,000, because I was working in a bank nearby, near Barjuman. Below was, I think, the Golden Cup or Coffee Cup or Dome Cafe. Dome Cafe. Yes, Dome Cafe. I used to see all the Goras sitting with a suit and having the expensive coffee. I was like, I was like a typical South Indian kid, poor. And I was like, man, I also want to have that coffee there, man. Rich guys are coming there. White guys are coming in the suit. I went there. I was like very excited. I went in the morning, 8 o'clock, when they opened. You know, the guy is a Filipino guy with a, like a chef. Yes, sir. Here's the menu. Morning, sir. Okay. Ah, sir. 20 year old, sir. And I took the uh, menu. And nice, in a cardboard like kind of thing. And I'm looking for coffee. But I see cappuccino and latte and uh, something else, white mocha and uh, hmm, what is all this? And obviously, thankfully, they mentioned 
what a mocha was, what a latte was. Otherwise, I'll tell you, latte, pate and cappuccino, I was like, I only knew coffee and tea. So they explained, spot of coffee with chocolate, spot of coffee with white vanilla and this. And I looked at them, like, bloody hell, so many types of coffees are there. What is this? And then I saw uh, breakfast, egg with the sausages and uh, beans, then French toast and I was like, oh, scrambled eggs and poached eggs. I didn't know what is a poached. It's like poached eggs. Oh, what is a scrambled egg? Now, you know, poached egg. Okay. So after I saw all that, I was like, oh, very good. And then biscuits were there. There was muffins were there and uh, oh, paradise, yeah. So I didn't know what to order and I asked the guy, what do you recommend? He suggested, why don't you have a English breakfast? English breakfast for Indian, English. Uh, okay, English breakfast. Because he recommended, no? Anyway, I asked him, now it's embarrassing if I say no. In came two eggs, tomato, uh, beans, sausages, pudding. You know, pudding is, you know, they make it with uh, meat and blood. If you, I don't know if you know that. And um, toast and he made a cappuccino he gave me with that. Because you could choose the option. Because there was Americano and all that. So I told you choose cappuccino. So I, oh, first time taste, no? So I enjoyed it. Yeah, but the cost was, as I cost was the whole day's meal was one breakfast this. I was like, oh, it's okay. Yeah, no problem. Two, three days, not one day's meal. Two days meal, three days. So I ate. Next day again excited, I went there. Third day again excited, went there. Went in the morning. Feeling good about it, seeing the Gora, seeing the... But eventually, you know, what happened was... Um, I got tired. After I think the fifth day or sixth day, after trying all the kayatais of coffee, French toast and... It's sweet and banana pudding and uh, sometimes I even went in the afternoon to have a salad and there was uh, like pasta with white sauce and truffle and uh, chicken. It's all new. But after a week, I got fed up. Yeah, Really got fed up. And then one day I was like, hey, forget all this. I'll go to the Malbari Hotel. I know some of you who are my haters are saying, ah. Malbari will remain forever Malbari. Yes, you are right. I was a South Indian guy, born in South Indian lifestyle. For me, that simplicity is good. And I went back to my parota. And I went back to uh, omelette. <laughs> and I went back to the one dram, two dram coffee. Ness coffee with hot milk and whatever, sugar. And then nearby there was also Patan. I think Ravi restaurant or something. So then I used to go there and very soon I stopped this dome cafe and expensive cafe. Because what I realized is after all that flair, the gimmick, everything over, I was doing it no more for the delight of the newness. I was doing it for the routine. I didn't need a hundred dirham or $27 or whatever coffee. I needed just coffee. And sometimes I would even go to Citibank and in the pantry there was you can make yourself and drink. So that comes, that brings me to today. I've had coffee in five star hotels. I've had food in five star hotels. I can literally order. Today I have the earning capacity where I can order expensive food. But here's a funny thing. Whether it's coffee, whether it's food or whatever. If it's something new, you might try it once. If it's expensive, out of curiosity, you'll do it once. Like whether it's a, a expensive pizza that everyone's talking about or not expensive. I mean, it's, it's so tasty, but obviously there's a premium. Or there is an Arabic restaurant, which is premium. Or there's a food festival where they're serving, you know, some stuff and... But eventually, you get tired and you go back to normal. Today, for me, it's not that I don't like Starbucks. I, I might have Starbucks here and there. In fact, uh, if you follow my channel, I did have, there was a Starbucks with almond pieces and almond milk and all that. 
I had that like four five times. It's the cost itself was the cost of three months of coffee that I could drink. But I enjoyed it because it was a rare blend, and I stopped. I can go to Amazon and order many times, but really, I enjoy this 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 homemade uh, coffee, which is good quality but cheap. You know. So the point I'm trying to make here is your life now, your life that you're living. Why are you living that life? For what? Are you living it for making lots of money? And you make lots of money to enjoy the best things that money can buy. If that is the case. Where is the limit? There are some people like in today's social media world we live. There are people who, even these fake gurus or these college students or these people who want to show that they are successful YouTubers or influencers, they show private jet. I'm sure private jet is quite an experience. I'm not trying to put them down. I'm sure it's quite an experience to have a full jet to yourself. The pilot talking to you. You can take photographs. You can sit down like a VIP, like a king. Private jet, instead of standing in line, see there's economy class, there's maybe premium economy, business class, and first class. What you eat in economy, what you eat in f f uh, first class. I've been once to first class. They treat you like a king. Oof. I've tra traveled business class two three times, but eventually you realize, okay, if you're going for a long haul journey, you might go business class or. Uh, instead of economy, go economy premium. But if you have a lot of money, you'll go first class because you want to enjoy the bed and be like a VIP. Like many influencers have put, no Emirates Airlines, they travel VIP or Qatar Airways, and they show that they are a king. It's we watch those videos because we're like, wow, I would like that. But people who can afford, no people who can afford, sometimes they don't actually think, eh, forget the first class, I'll just travel business. Because you want to achieve that purpose, there is a purpose behind it. For me, drinking the coffee, the coffee that I'm drinking, maybe if I was uh, one of those youngsters, I would show, oh, I'm drinking Starbucks, see my name, and I'd put it on Instagram, Starbucks life, yay, and all that. But today, for me, what am I going to show anyone? Who the hell cares whether I drink Amazon or whether I drink, uh, 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 you know? Starbucks or a premium coffee or made homemade coffee. Nobody cares because my my audience is interested in totally something else. And whom am I going to show off? Or what what will I get by showing off? So we are living our lives to earn money so that we can have a certain standard. I think what we really need to think about is. How much money do we want to earn? Now, that's a very tough question to ask. Huh? Because if you ask somebody who is maybe has only 10,000, uh, let's say, dollars in his bank account, he'll say, man, I wish I had 100,000. If you speak to a guy with 100,000, he'll say, oh, 1 million. If you speak to a guy 1 million, he'll say, 10 million. 10 million, 100 million. So everyone wants more. But then, with all this more kept in the bank, what are you going to do about it? See, today, you know, today, I told you, you know, I, I was sleeping at, uh, was sleeping and I got this epiphany. And why one of my uh, weird reasons of sleeping in an odd timing is because the clients from the West, their timings are different and they want, when they are free, I have to be free. And it's good money. It's good money. They are premium clients. So, one hour of work is like two, three days freedom. Like sometimes, I know I kind of joke about this, but I'm just lucky, I'm blessed that one client or one session is what one person would earn per month. Now, I'm lucky, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm really lucky that I have this. But now having this, I can go on overdrive and 
keep trying to be rich and trying to be richer than the rich or you know okay i'm earning ten thousand dollars per month i want twenty thousand uh, dollars per month i want fifty thousand dollars you know in business no people always want to be more richer like if you ask a millionaire are you rich enough he will look at maybe a businessman who earns 100 million there was this on facebook if you ask kobe bryant byron byron or whatever are you rich he would look at jeff bezos and say no man he's rich if you ask jeff bezos he would say oh elon musk because he's richer than him so where does it end you know what i feel you should focus on is you should have enough money where you can enjoy your life where you can be happy because understand this much tomorrow if i were to die for example me all this money this imac this machine this expensive gadget like i'll show you i just accidentally kept here see samsung fold and samsung ultra okay Samsung Fold, Samsung Ultra, then the iPhone which is charging. Okay, iPhone is charging. Sorry. Plus, I have another two, three phones. I don't know where it is. Do you think I can take all this when I go to my grave? Can't take, right? So why am I working so hard? For what? For who? For myself. So the best thing to do is earn enough where you can enjoy your life, where you can be happy. and if you want me to be specific and nail it on the head i would say earn enough where you can live the life of your dreams you know based on how you want on your terms today i today i'm not the richest guy i'm not very uh, super rich or whatever by whatever standards but i'll tell you i'm very happy and i'll explain to you how it's very simple i can sleep when i like whatever time i like i can sleep whatever time i want to get up i can get up whatever i want to put on youtube i can put I like this topic whatever i want to eat i can eat wherever i want to go i can go total freedom i don't have a boss i don't have go to office i don't know. i'm i'm not saying that is a bad thing but i'm telling you for me i don't have to do all this please i'm not one of those youtubers or influencers who say 9 to 5 is a shitty thing no 9 to 5 is it feeds so many people in this plan on this planet it's you have to be lucky to even have a 9 to 5 job nowadays so if i were to summarize i'll just tell you this work hard earn money save money for the ultimate goal which should be to live a life of your terms on your terms the way you want it with total freedom you don't have to be a multi millionaire for it you just have to be like this you know self sufficient where you earn your earnings and your expenses when you minus you have to get a profit every day every week every month and that you save and if your lifestyle is below your earnings then you have savings and that's why you see look 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 at this this is not expensive this is a very cheap shirt you see my setup it's very basic you see my lifestyle online very simple because i don't want to show off i don't need to show off i don't need to have an expensive car expensive house exp- for who whom am i why do i need to show off for what to stick to your standards for i'm happy man today i'm blessed and lucky that i can even have this coffee there are so many people who maybe can't even have that so bottom line what i want to tell you is please work hard slog your ass earn money save money live a life where your earnings are at a level 
and where your expenses are lower than that and keep saving and one fine day move towards the life where you can live the life on your terms some people after they win a lottery they do that some people after 10 15 years they do that some people choose to retire like i have people in my whatsapp groups who have earned enough money they're saying hey, enough retire even there are people who are single who said i saved i slogged my ass for 5 years saved lived like a beggar pray i can live for the next 20 years no problem and they do what they love because end of the day remember yes the 500 bucks coffee or the 200 bucks starbucks every day is great all that is great but why are you drinking coffee is the question so if you are one of those people <coughs> if you are one of those people who that is your lifestyle you like that fine but for people like me it was just curiosity and then died out and today i'm happy with my cheap coffee <laughs> anyway this is what i wanted to share with you let me know your thoughts like i told you i'm, I'm not rich I'm, i'm not a millionaire whatever but i'm very happy i can do what i love live the life on my terms anyway good bad ugly feel free comment down below i love to hear your thoughts and if you have any questions and yeah contribute do contribute your thoughts because i love reading your comments all right you guys take care me signing off